All right, let's move on. I got a word, y'all. Like today is our abbreviated Sunday. We're going to get it and quit it. Amen. Dr. Tony and I are part of an amazing, wonderful work that is a, 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 a conference. And we got to get on this conference in just a little while here. But I wanted to bring this message of hope and healing to your heart. How do you manifest miracles in your life? Listen, you got to begin to ask. You got to begin to ask. It's like going to a restaurant and placing your order. So I want you to get a pen and a paper as I pray. And then we're going to go before the throne and get this word into your hearts and spirit. Come on, glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me know you're praying with me by throwing up some hearts. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come together in a time of agreement and and ask for grace uh, for, for what we are settling in our hearts to do. Thank you for the word that you've given us. We ask in Jesus' name that you would minister life and Father God, give us ears to hear. I, I yield myself right now, God, that you would speak a word, a word in season, that you would speak out loud, hallelujah, and let us have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Teach, teacher. Teach, teacher, as Deacon Mike says, Holy Ghost, hallelujah. God, we're dependent on the Holy Spirit. In this moment, in this hour, in this time, hallelujah, to speak a right now word and season to our hearts. And we receive it. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen and praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Listen, if you want to know how to man, how many, I got a question. How many people like to know how to manifest in your life? The stuff you want, the stuff you trust in God for the stuff you believe in. Throw up some hearts. Let me know you hear me and that you with me. How many of y'all would like to know how to manifest miracles in your life to get those things that God has promised you? Uh, amen. Out of your prayer, out of your heart and into, you know, into your hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I want to share something with you today. Go with me to John 14, 14. John 14 and 14. Glory to God. And this is a very familiar passage, very familiar scripture, praise God, but, uh, and, and most of us know this, but I just want to read it into your ear, and this is out of the NIV. It says, you may ask me for anything, ask anything in my name, and I will do it. Glory to God, and uh, over in, um, let's see, that's NIV, and it reads almost the same identical way in King James, <clears throat> hallelujah. John, uh, he said, uh, Jesus is the speaker, and he said, ask me anything, ask anything in my name, and I shall do it. Glory to God, ask anything in my name. If you ask, if you ask anything in my name, it's real simple. He said, last four words, I will do it. Can you type in, I will do it? <laughs> I will do it. Amen. And so, when you're looking to manifest something in your life and you're looking for God to, I want to make sure I'm on the right phone here. Yeah, here I am. Okay, when you're looking for God to manifest something in your life and you're looking for your prayers to come to fruition, praise God, and you want to see what God is doing and what God is saying and you want to see that thing come uh, into, into fruition, praise God, it's a couple of things. I want you to think, because he promised us that he would do it. He said he will do it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so what is it that we need to look at first? I want you to think in terms of going to a restaurant. Can you pretend like you're going to a restaurant? And when you walk in a restaurant, uh, they want to know how many is in your party. And um, praise God. When they want to know how many is in the party, then they seat you. And the first thing they do, they want to know, amen, uh, they give you a menu. I want to see it. They give you a menu and they ask you to read over the menu so that you can now make your selections, praise God. And so when you get the menu, you start reading, you start looking. Well, the first thing about manifesting, praise God, uh, when you get the menu, you got to read what's available. You got to see if you're in a Coney Island, you're in a Coney Island restaurant, hey amen. You want to see what, you know, the specials are. If you're in a, a steakhouse, you want to see uh, what they offer and what they have and what's going to come on that menu. And so when we want to get when we want to get something from God, when we're looking to receive from the Lord, first of all, you got to look at the menu. The menu is the Bible. 
You got to look on the Bible and see what's available. You got to see what the promises are. You got to see what lines up with the word of God. What is it that God wants to give to you? What is available? What can you have? Hallelujah. And so you got to, the Bible is our menu. Come on, somebody. Amen. And then number two, so number one, you got to get the menu, which is the Bible, and look at the promises. See what specials are available. See what, and so salvation is always at, at the top. Now, when you look at a menu in a restaurant, amen, uh, the menu has pictures. And you know what? That is the reason they put pictures on menus. When you look at a menu, it might have 50, 60 items, of, you know, possibilities of, of things you could order and select from. It might be a very extensive menu. But restaurants have gone through painstaking uh, marketing to put pictures of the thing that they most want to promote and sell. And the reason that, you know, we've all heard that a picture is worth what? Somebody finish that for me. A picture is worth what? 1, a thousand, thousand words. A thousand words. So when they put a picture on that menu, and that is the item that they most want in that category to sell. That's what they want the, their, their, their customers to, to order. Amen. And so listen, they have four categories on the menu an appetizer, an entree, a dessert, and then their specialty drinks, okay? So when you go in a restaurant and you see this picture of the of the, of the entree, they might have um, a stuffed mushrooms or, or clams or a zucchini, fried zucchini. And then the entree, they have this succulent steak. And when you look at the picture, it's always a close-up of that plate. And you can see the juices coming off that steak. It'd be like, make it burn, mouth water. You see that big, oh, that big hot, you can see the steam in the picture coming out of that baked potato. Amen. And you can see that it has butter just oozing out of that potato oh my goodness and it's just enough sour cream my god when you look at the picture you be it's so tantalizing your mouth starts to water well all of that is on intentional and on purpose amen amen and when the dessert you look at the dessert they don't have they might sell cheesecake and caramel cake and uh, apple pie and ice cream, but they don't put a picture of everything. But the most decadent thing that they want you to participate in and buy. Oh, honey, here comes the temptation because they'll have that piece of cheesecake with just a little bit of a squirrel of a raspberry on it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you're talking about looking good and your mouth be watering. You want this while you're reading it. You want this while you're viewing the menu. And then their specialty drinks, oh my goodness, it'd be something with a sugar rim on a chilled glass with ice in it and some kind of fancy straw that got loopy de loop and it got the nerve to have an umbrella on it. <laughs> and you'll be looking like, even if you don't drink them drinks, you get so enticed by it. Okay, listen, what is the point of that? A um, uh, picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, they put these pictures up for a reason. What am I saying? When you're trying to manifest what you want from God, you got to get a vision. Hallelujah. You got to get a vision that's tantalizing. You got to see that thing in, in 3D. You got to see that thing so that when you see it, your mouth can almost taste that steak. Your mouth can almost taste that hot baked potato with that butter streaming down it. Amen, amen, amen. What am I saying? Part of getting this thing when you look at a menu in a restaurant, that's important. And you gotta you gotta look at what you want. You gotta kind of get a vision of what you want to order. Because if you without a vision, the Bible says the people perish. So when we want something from God, we gotta get now start getting specific. We gotta have some specificities. You can't just go, God bless me. That's not how you manifest. You know, you get up the next morning, you're blessed. Amen. You can't just say, God, you know, I need more money. Just just give me more money. And you find a dollar. <laughs> That's more money. Listen, you got to be specific. If you're going to manifest, come on, y'all. You got to get that picture. That picture got to have butter slithered all over the, the potato. What am I saying? Be specific with God. Come and give God your, 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 your ask. Amen. You got to place your order. Somebody type in place your order. You got to place your order. When you're in the restaurant, 
You gotta, you can't just get the menu and sit there for two hours reading. It's not a book. <laughs> the only purpose of that is so that you'll know how to go. You'll know properly what's available, what's realistic. You cannot go into a pizza joint and order, you know, filet mignon. It's not on the menu. Hallelujah. So you you can't look in 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 the book and see, you got when you look in the Bible, you look at the realistic to see what's available. Glory to God. Please, y'all, stay with me for a minute. You're looking in the book to see what's on God's menu. What is he serving up? What is it that you are that you can get? What can you achieve? What can you be blessed with? What can you have? And so listen, hallelujah, get a clear, clear, concise look at what's available to you. Because the Bible says that nothing, that with God, all things are possible. So when you look at the menu of the book of the Bible, you see that ain't no limits on that thing. There's no limits. You can be happy in love. You can have a blissful marriage. You can have a, a bountiful best life. You can live in abundance. You can have a good family dynamic. Y'all better come on. Hallelujah. And you absolutely Absolutely can have a loving, loving life. You can be healed. You can be healthy. You can, you can have uh, all addictions broke up your life. What is impossible with God? The Bible says nothing. On our menu, nothing is impossible. Listen to them who believe. But you know, we got to place our order. We got to get specific with God. You got to have a vision. You got to get a vision and keep a vision until the thing comes to plate is right in front of you. Glory to God. Number three, you got to decide on what to ask for. You got to decide on what you want and ask for it. Did you get that? You got to make a decision on what you want. What is it on this menu you want? You can't look at the front of the menu, open up the middle of the menu, uh, look on the back of the menu, and then start all over again. <laughs> It, you cannot be indecisive. Come on, somebody. If you don't make a decision, you won't get nothing. Because nothing for nothing means nothing. You cannot just say, oh, God will just bless me. Please don't play God like that because he's always blessing you. Oh, come on, somebody. Put your order in. Place your order. Get very detailed with God. Get detailed with God. God is a God of specificity. When he told Noah, build a boat, he didn't say leave it up to his own discretion. He didn't say, you know, use your own intellect. Go Google how to build a boat. He said, no, no, no. Here's how you do it. You're going to do it by this much and that much. You're going to use this and you're going to do that. Here's the material you need for this and here's the material you need for that. God is the God of specificities. He does not waste his word. And so what's on his menu, you can go to that menu, pick out the promise you believe for, pick out the promise you most need to succeed. Come on, somebody. You get the book, hallelujah, flowers on the menu, and then you order it up. You have to decide. You cannot be indecisive. Be crystal clear on what it is you want. Glory to God. Please don't just say, I, I'm lonely. I want a partner. Mm, mm. Please don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't be specific. I want somebody who cares for my heart. Somebody who I'm content to, that I can have a blissful marriage with. Somebody who get me. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody who I can become one with. Come on, get specific. Get specific. I want somebody who's mentally healthy, emotionally healthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put that order in. Place the order. Amen. And speak up and decide on, first of all, make the, go down the menu and decide what you want. And then you got to ask for it. You got to put the order in. Be clear on it. You have not because you ask not. Listen, quit, quit ordering stuff. Can you imagine this with me? You're in the restaurant. The waiter, the waitress come. Hi, may I help you? What can I get for you? How can I serve you? And you go, mm, I want the steak and potato. Oh, that's a great selection. And then they walk away to go put your order in. You say, can I get, uh, get, get my waitress? Get my waitress. You come back. I think I want macaroni and cheese. Okay, fine. That's, that's a good selection. They cancel the steak and potato. They place a new order. Come on, for macaroni and cheese. And you sit there being indecisive. Hallelujah. Oh, you sit there and you go, ah, oh, get the waitress again. And you come back and you know, you know what? I think I'm going to have that tuna salad. 
Okay, that's a really good, people love our tuna salad. Okay, it's available. And so they get ready. They cancel now the steak and potato. They cancel now the macaroni and cheese. And then they put in the order for the tuna. And you go, uh, listen, you're not going to get nothing. <laughs> Because every time, hallelujah, every time you cancel one thing out, every time you make a new a reorder, hey, Shonda, come on, somebody. Amen. You cancel the old order out, and then you make another one, you cancel the new order out. And you can play that game. That's what they did in that mountain for 40 years. They were so indecisive. They wouldn't stay in their faith. They wouldn't keep believing for what they said they wanted. They asked God for freedom. God set them free. And then they got over there. And let me tell you how you cancel out uh, your order. And hallelujah. Amen. How do you cancel out? Number one, you cancel out your order with complaining. Y'all better come on. The day you complain, you are, you are canceling out the order. Uh, hallelujah. You're going to, uh, wherever you complain, you remain. You cannot get anything off the menu. Complaining is the cancellation or anything on God's promises. When you complain, you remain in your current situation and your current circumstance. Somebody should say amen right there. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen what the Bible says. Amen. Over in James, hallelujah. Over in James, in uh, the first chapter. Uh, uh, yeah, over in James. That's where it's at. Praise God. Amen. Over in James chapter one. And if you would look at verse six, amen, through eight. James chapter 1 and verses 6 through 8. Hallelujah. Now, this is the NIV, so it might read a little different, you know, just bear with me. But this is the word of the Lord. It says, but when you ask, isn't that what we're talking about? How do you get your miracle? How do you get your prayers answered? How do you manifest what you do want in your life? It says, but when you ask, you must believe. Come on, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave on the sea, come on, and he's blown and it's tossed to and fro by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from God. Come on, y'all. He should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Amen. Such because a double-minded man, listen, is unstable in all his ways. What is God saying? You can, it's not that God don't want to give it to you. Amen. But you keep changing your order. If you when you when you get into you say you want this, you say you want marriage, you say you want prosperity, you say you want wisdom, you say you want happiness, you say you want joy, glory to God. You say you want it, so you order it, and then you start murmuring and complaining about it. And listen, God is saying, No, don't be unstable, don't be unstable, and don't do that because now you're not gonna get anything. They're not going to get anything. Hallelujah. You ever seen a, a parent um, <laughs> to take their child in a toy store and you say you can have one thing? You can get one thing. I'm going to bless you with one thing. And the child come back with five things in a cart. And the mother say, no, but you're going to get one thing. And then they throw a fit and a tantrum and start acting a mess. Amen. Because of the other four things, praise God, they want it all. And they want it all right now. And the mother's trying to teach them discipline and discernment. Hallelujah. And they cut up such a fool in the store. The mother said, okay, guess what? We're leaving without nothing. Oh, come on, somebody. Anybody getting this? Throw up some hearts and then you see you say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he said, be clear. Don't be indecisive. Make up your mind. What do you want? If you really want to be married, happily married, you want a blissful marriage, say that. And then listen, start going to marriage, marriage therapy. Start going to marriage preparedness. Start taking classes on happy marriage. Come on, somebody. Hey, man, you want to be wealthy. You want to have abundance. Listen, you should, go, first of all, go start tithing and go clean up your credit. Come on, y'all. Don't ask God to make you a millionaire and you don't know how to handle a, a, a thousand there. Come on, somebody. Fill it back. A hundred there. Learn the rules of engagement. Hallelujah. What will it take? What is it going to take for me to get to this wealthy place? What do I need to learn? What is my lesson? Hallelujah. So you got to now engage in what you're believing for. You ordered it. You ordered it. Hallelujah. And don't be double-minded about it. If you say you want it, stay with what you said. Glory to God. That's so good right there. If you said you want it, stay with what you said. Hallelujah. And then listen, number four, 
place your order and then prepare to receive it. Place your order and prepare to receive it. When you look at the menu and you decide on the steak and the steak and the mashed potatoes and broccoli, bam, you you done made the order. You place your order. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you got to prepare to have it served to you. You got to prepare for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Then listen, while the meal is in the back being prepared, you need to be preparing for the meal. Glory to God. What am I saying? Prepare for the miracle. Be ready. Listen, if you don't have to, what is the saying? Uh, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. There's a scripture in the Bible that said that there were 10 women. They were all virgins and they were preparing of the bridegroom. And the Bible says five of them were fools. Well, and look, I ain't called nobody a fool. Don't get offended, okay? <laughs> five of them were foolish while the other five were wise. What's the difference between the fools and the ones that were wise? But the Bible said preparedness. Five of them said, you know what? He promised to come back. He just never said when he's coming back. So they said, if he come in the day, I'll be ready. My dress hanging up. All I got to do is dump in it. They brought their dress. They brought their train. They brought their flowers. But they also brought oil. Because they said, listen, wonder if he come in the night. Wonder if this, this thing uh, happens and pop off at night. See, God doesn't tell you when it's going to happen. Oh, he just tell you it's going to happen. So if, when you believe God, ladies and gentlemen, and you place your order in heaven, you say, I'm believing for this. I'm believing for that. Then you got to prepare. Prepare is the way that you let God know you ain't flaky and you ain't playing no games. When you're ready for your miracle, your miracle is ready for you. Listen, you do not have to twist God's arm and beg God to bless you. Your, oh, your breakthrough is on the way. And are you prepared for it? Because if you get prepared and you stay prepared, you don't have to now get prepared. Listen, what am I saying? They brought their oil. They said, if this, hey, hey, just in case, just in case this thing pop off in the middle of the night and my boo come and then he show up, I'm going to be ready to blow up. Honey, I ain't going to be fumbling around for no flashlight. I ain't going to be asking nobody for a cigarette light. <laughs> I ain't going to need nobody to help me put on my makeup. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to listen. I'm going to throw some uh, some uh, that light on. I'm going to light the room up and I'm going to get dressed and I'll be standing here with my lantern in my hand, hallelujah, and ready for my boo. Hallelujah. What am I saying? When you ready for the blessing, you ready for the miracle, you ready for the manifestation, prepare. While they preparing your meal, the meal is in the back. It's in the back. You can't see them fix your food. You can't see them. Well, that's sort of like what's happening, happening in the spirit realm. You don't see the miracle coming together. Hallelujah. I don't think they do railway no more. I, I don't, but back in my day, I'm telling my age now, it was a program called the railway. <laughs> you saw a beautiful couch. You said, oh, my God, that's a bad house. Oh, that's a bad couch. But you ain't moved. This couch way too big for the current situation you're in. It's way too big for your home, way too big for your apartment. But you know that in four months, you're moving into your new house. The new crib is already ready. You just wait on the other folks to move out. Or if you're building it from the ground, you're waiting for them to finish putting the nails in it. So you put the couch in the layaway. At least they used to. And what do you do? You pay on it. You pay on it. You pay on it. You keep putting money on it. And guess what? You pay it off. Then you set up what they call the delivery date. Come on, somebody. And you coordinate that delivery date so that when they bring it, they can lay it and put it down in the right living room, in the right place. They don't have to be cramped and trying to make something fit in where they don't get in. Listen, what am I saying? But that that couch that you pay for is in the warehouse. You don't see the couch no more. The couch, you saw it in the in the showroom. You saw it at the furniture store. But listen, that couch, they know it's not in your house yet. It's not sitting in them, your living room yet. Oh, hallelujah. But if you keep making them payments, hallelujah, that, that same couch that is in the warehouse with the plastic covers on it, amen, when you make that final payment and say, bam, it's due day to deliver. It's delivery day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then they're going to go and get that. Say, it's your couch. Why? Because that's your couch. Baby, that couch been set aside. Guess what? That couch, they can't sell to nobody else because that couch belongs to you. Listen, we call Shandaraba, and they will deliver that thing, and it's going to show up. 
at your house. It's the same couch. It's the one you put in the low one. It's the one you paid all the payments off, and you gonna get that very couch. Listen to me. What am I talking about? Hallelujah. That couch that's in the warehouse will soon be in your house. That's what's happening in the spirit with them. When they when you place your order in prayer, when you ask God for the specific thing you want, I want to be married, happily married, blissful. And stop saying married. I just keep saying I want to be married. Say, I want a blissful marriage, honey, because you will have whatever you say. So you better put some respect on that thing. Honey, be specific with God. This is my order. It's just like when you order a potato. And you say, I not only do I want uh, some uh, hot melted butter on it, honey, put some chives and some sour cream on it. Now, don't put enough sour cream on it and make the potato cold. I want a dollar for it. Y'all better come on. Be specific when you place your order. Hallelujah. And so you, you can get that thing delivered to you in the right time. But why is it in the back? Why is it in the spirit realm is what I'm trying to say. Why you don't see it don't mean that God ain't working on it. God is always working in the back, oh, shot out in the spirit room. And he, while he's preparing that thing for you, you get prepared for that thing. Who I'm preaching real good today. <laughs> you prepare yourself. How do you prepare yourself? Well, when I order a meal, I always get up and wash my hands. I don't wash my hands until after I get a waitress back to the menu because other people that touch it. And girl, I've been doing that way before Corona. Ain't got nothing to do with Corona. That was just how I got down. <clears throat> but listen to me, praise God. When you're prepared, I wash my hands. What do I mean by that? Wash your hands because your meal is coming. Wash your hands because your miracle is coming. What do I mean by that? A, a, a way of looking at it in the spirit realm is washing your hands. Is watch your actions. What? Make sure your hands is touching what's holding. Make sure you ain't dibbling and dabbling in crazy stuff. Make sure you ain't being a busybody and getting into other people's affairs. Oh, come on. Watch your actions is what I'm saying. Don't tear down relationships. Don't get into foolishness. Wash your hands. Why? Because that thing that you order, you place the order and it prepares being prepared for you. Do you know what the Bible says? God says, I'm going to prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemy. Listen, God finna sit you up in the queen's chair. God finna sit you up in the high chair. God finna sit you up in the king's chair. Oh, glory. Are y'all listening to me? I got to see some hearts to see. Uh, see, I need some feedback. I need energy. I need energy. You can't sleep on Dr. Regina. Uh, come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on, amen, hallelujah. Oh, come on. Is anybody, I need some praise the Lord right now. Right oh, now. Yeah. Let shout out about that. Yeah. Come on, let me know, let me know you're having little bullsada that you hear what God is saying. Let me know you're hearing what God is saying. Oh, God is saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, God said, I'm a prepare. Oh, anybody that know God is preparing your table, he's preparing you know, don't let don't be discouraged in this hour. Don't let the don't let depression and discouragement keep you from your assignment. You ask God for it, you ordered it up. It's coming. Amen. It's coming. Thank you don't know no, no. you never let the best of honor come and take the seat that everything is prepared. Yeah. So he said, I'm preparing a table for you. And I'm gonna do it right in front of your haters. Do you know God wants to manifest this thing way more than you ever could want it? Mm, thank you. Oh, you ain't got to twist his arm to be good to you, to be amazing. Y'all, this is a good thing God is doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. And so why he's preparing this thing. Uh, when the guest of honor is time for the guest of honor to come in, they throw open the double doors. Hey, and you get to walk on the red carpet. What am I saying? That the blessing that God is preparing for you, he want to do it so people can see it. You don't have to hide your miracle. All you do is stay high. Listen, stay in your secret place uh, while you're asking. Stay quiet while you're asking. Oh, listen to me. Hiya, shaka, baka, teka. Stay quiet while you're believing God. You ain't got to flaunt it. God will do that. Hey, God will get the glory. All you got to do is make sure you ask. Ask. Put your order in and yeah. don't keep changing it. Don't keep changing it. Okay, listen, every time you sit back, uh, no, I don't think I really want that. You you negate and cancel the blessing that's being prepared for you. If you're getting it, somebody shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So prepare, wash your hands. And then what would we do before we eat? We say grace. Before the food comes, before you start gobbling it down, say, God, I thank you. Thank you. Say, thank you, Jesus. 
So before the miracle show up, guess what you got to do? Bless it. Thank you. Before you see it, you bless it. You start blessing God. You start acting like you already have it. The Bible says it this way. Begin to call things that are not as though they already are. And so no, the Cadillac ain't sitting in your driveway. The Mercedes is not in your front of your house. Come on, somebody. The Bentley ain't out there today. Ooh, Shonda. But honey, if you would just start praising God, if you would just start giving God the grace, saying grace before you get the meal, hey, before you drive the car, before you move in the mansion, come on, hallelujah. Hey, before the souls come, before the church is filled, what is it that you need God to do before you see it? Begin to give God praise for it. You know what? And when, before you, the, the, the last thing before you eat, you have to make sure you got your utensils, your yeah. fork, your knife, your spoon, your napkins. But you got to make sure, amen, that your fork, you look around, make sure you got your food. Because it's a terrible thing for them to show up with the food and then you look down and ain't got nothing but your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you got to be ready for the blessing. Come on, somebody. Uh, when the food comes, the last thing you want to be doing is waiting on the napkin and, 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 the, and the fork and the knife. And so what am I saying? Why you why the food is being prepared? In other words, why your miracle is being prepared in the spirit realm? Get the fork and napkin. What does that mean? If you believe in God to move, start packing. Wear your boxes, baby. Wear your boxes. You believe God for a new house. Come on. Oh, yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Where's your napkin? Where's your fork? Fork, knife, spoon. What is it? Because you're getting ready to eat. Ah, you're getting ready to eat. Aren't you hungry? Aren't you hungry for your miracle? Hallelujah. Listen, the dangerous place to be is we do stop hungry. The Bible says he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. You got to be hungry for your miracle. Yeah. It's time to eat. I saw Puff Daddy do that once on his show. He said, when you hungry, uh, you ain't scared. You get on that stage and do your thing. You got to be so hungry for your success, hungry for your family's success, hungry for your miracle, hungry for your health, hungry for your weight loss, hungry for your, your family's blessing. You got to get hungry. Somebody type in, you got to get hungry. Thank you, Jesus. You got to get hungry. Hallelujah. And listen, what am I saying? So that's how you prepare. Make sure you start getting ready. Start getting ready. Take those marriage classes. Take the marriage classes. Take the wealth building classes. Study wealth before you have a extra dime. Be faithful in tithing because the Bible is clear on this. It's clear on this. I said it's clear on this. The Bible is clear on it. It says if you are faithful over little, then you get to rule over much. You got to be kidding. You want to be a millionaire? You got to start tithing on that hundred dollars you get. Amen. If you don't, oh, Shande K. Tadabasa. Somebody needs to say amen right there. Amen. Yeah. Where's your fork? Where's your knife? Where's your napkin? You believe in God for wealth and you haven't learned how to save a nickel every thing that coming every month, every paycheck. You, you get every nickel and you just spend it. I had a wealth talk with one of my children yesterday and I said, when you look back at your W 2. And it says, if you got your six figures on there, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Look back over that year and tell me what you bought. Tell me what you invested in. You got to be able to see what you did. Don't just be a forever be a consumer. The devil is a liar. Oh, God, I thank you, Jesus. I remember the day I said, I'm no longer a consumer. I am now an investor. And I mean, my, I, I, I ain't been playing. I have not been playing. Why? I got my napkin. I got my fork. I'm ready. Bring it on. Bring it on. Glory to God. I'm ready. I'm ready. How many of you ready for your miracle? You want to manifest? Prepare. Ask. Ask God for it. Place your order and then start preparing for it. Placing your order is what you're asking for. Hey, glory to God. The Bible says this over in Matthew 7 and 7. Ask. And you shall receive. It does not say ask and you might get it. It says ask and you shall receive it. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Seek and you're going to find it. Knock and the door going to be open. Ain't nobody that can keep you and me out. There, 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 there is no system that can keep you out of the game. Come on, somebody, because God will lift you up. And he said, I'll make the first, the head, I will make uh, the head to tell the, tell the, 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 I'm sorry, I will make you first. Amen. That's what I'm trying to say. I'll make you first. I'll make you the head and not the tail. I'll make you go before and you be above and not beneath. He said, the first, the people that used to be at the top, the first going to be last. And check that, the last going to show up first. I better say amen. amen. That means you're a woman, you ain't got to worry about it. Your, your ethnicity, you ain't got to worry about it. Your sex, you ain't got to worry about it. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. And so let me finish this up. Praise God. I need you to type in, I'm going to win in the end anyway. I'm going to win this thing. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm going to win. I'm going to win in Jesus' name. Now listen to me, hallelujah. So you're preparing for what God is preparing for you. You're learning how to handle finances. You're becoming financially literate. Come on, somebody. You can't be scared to take a course You can in the area that God is going to bless you. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, hallelujah. Then number five, when you're getting ready to be, before the meal comes, check, check. Come on, y'all. Don't leave me. Sit up for a minute. Sit up. Don't leave me, y'all. Stay with me in the spirit. Check, check. Before the meal comes, what comes before the meal? Listen to me. You're going to get a, that bread and that beverage. Ah, you better come on. Stop playing. You're going to get your bread and your beverage. What am I talking about? Hallelujah. They're going to bring you a basket of bread, a loaf of bread. They're going to bring you bread. You're going to get bread and a beverage. Glory to God. What would you like to drink? That's what they ask you. And you get that before the meal, before the entree comes. So what am I saying? What am I talking about? Praise God. Amen. Listen, that's your communion. While you're waiting on your manifestation, while you're waiting on that new business idea, the drop in your spirit, while you're waiting on God to manifest or what he promised, what you saw on the menu, which we call the Bible, while you're waiting on that thing to come to fruition, while you think waiting for that thing to show up in your life, glory to God, take all communion. Communion must be a regular part. He says as often, as often, come on somebody, as often as you do this, you show me you're remembering. That's how we show God we got Jesus on our, on our mind. Uh -huh. That's how we show up and say, God, I know you didn't forget me because I didn't forget you. I know you got me. I know you're preparing this day. When you start feeling shaky, weak, and like, God, is it ever going to happen? Baby boo, run and get your bread and your wine. Go get the communion table. Communion is made up of the word, two words, common and union. This says I commune with God. It's, I do it regularly. Yeah. That's often. So while you're waiting on the manifestation, be taking communion over it. God, you said by your stripes I was healed. The doctor say something stupid. You said, God, hallelujah, hallelujah, that you would never leave me or forsake me. You said, God, I would be the head and not the tail. Take that thing with communion and take it back to God. Put him in remembrance of his promises. Not that he forgot. The remembrance is for you. That's the benefit you. So you take, you get your bread and your beverage. Amen. I'm almost done. And then number six, you got to be patient. Listen, if while your steak is being grilled, huh, while your potato is being roasted, come on, somebody, while your vegetables, and they get ready to come out. Sometimes you just have to keep looking at the chicken, let your mouth water. Just keep looking at the vision. Come on. You never complain. Never complain. I said never complain while you're waiting on your manifestation. And let me tell you what you don't do. Somebody, you got to be patient with the promise. Please type that in. Be patient with the promise. Be patient with the promise. Why is that? When you get in a restaurant and you're in a fine restaurant, you're in a good restaurant, and they're doing their thing, and they're attending to you, do you hear go bo 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 Listen to me. Listen to me. Praise God. When you're in that restaurant, the one thing you don't do, don't watch your watch. Don't watch your watch. Never look at your watch. When you're waiting, and what am I trying to say? What you talking about, Dr. Gina? While you are pa be patient on the promise, never look at time. 
Oh, I've been doing this this long. I've been praying about this this long. I've been praying over my health this long. I've been praying over abundance this long. I've been praying for this this long. Listen, God is not the God of time. God is the God of faith. Come on, somebody. I'm glad y'all got that. God is not the God of time. God is the God of faith. Hallelujah. And so we don't have to, we don't do this with God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't watch your watch. Don't let the devil trick you out about you. Don't get impatient. Hey, well, like, don't get impatient. It's coming. Remember, they, they execute this to the finest degree. Because God ain't going to bring you nothing that you got to send back to the kitchen. God ain't going to send you nothing that's leftovers. God is freshly, oh, freakable, sakaraba. He's going to send you a fresh miracle. Yeah. It's yours. It's exclusive. He didn't give you somebody else's miracle. This one is yours. It got your name on it. Be patient. Patiently wait on the Lord, the Bible says. Be patient. Don't watch your watch. Hallelujah. The Bible says when you pray, believe that you received it. So you got to speak in past tense to manifest. You know, I remember when I was struggling with my weight. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, I was good God Almighty. I don't know, maybe a size 32. And I would just <laughs> I would just sit up and say, God, I just thank you. I'm a size 12. Lord, I just thank you. I appreciate all my new wardrobe in a size 12. And y'all, I was size 32 all day. <laughs> I was size 32. Uh, but you know what? I, I patiently believe God for his help. I believe God for his help. I believe God and ask God for wisdom. If you're struggling with your weight, ask God. I can tell you this firsthand. Ask God for strength. Ask God for deliverance. Ask God for strategy. And then believe it. He called up. And then start talking crazy talk. What is crazy talk? It's your faith language. See, we speak either one language or the other. It ain't but two languages. I ain't talking about English and Spanish. It's two languages. One is fear and one is faith. One is fear talk and one is faith talk. You got to speak faith in order to communicate with God. Come on, somebody. So patiently wait. Amen. Begin to talk to people about your expectation. Hey, glory to God. Like a crazy person. Do y'all remember Noah kept saying, it's going to rain? It's going to rain? It's going to rain? What are you doing, man? I am preparing for the rain. <laughs> you need to prepare too. Nobody believed it. Nobody, nobody heard him out. No, they thought he was the, the most insane preacher on the planet. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Do you. Do you, baby girl. Do you, baby boy. Do you. Believe the promises on the menu. Believe this stuff. Because God has no respect to persons. And then finally, listen to me. Thank you, Jesus. Your meal come. You got to enjoy it. Enjoy your blessing. Enjoy. Learn to get present in your life. Don't live in the past. And do not get so negated out to the future that you, you, you disregard your present. Enjoy the place God got you at now. When the meal comes, enjoy the meal. And y'all, of course, in any restaurant, you got to pay the bill. Mm -hmm. At some point, your server, your waiter, your waitress is going to come and they're going to present you with the, with the bill for the meal. How do you pay for the bill with the meal? You got to make two payments. Got to make two payments. Listen to me. You got to pay for the meal in praise, and you got to tip with worship. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. You got to pay with praise. Oh, come on, somebody. When God does what God says He's gonna do, and you get your you get your blessing. Oh, when your miracle manifests, come on, don't make it a small thing. That's why you can't be inconsistent about what you ask for. Because see, when you're not sure if God did it or not, you won't pay. Mm, come on, somebody. You won't pay him what he's due if you're not sure he, he gave it to you or not. You'll be thinking, oh, you got to raise. Oh, my boss did that. My job with that. Well, see, okay, whatever. God does all things good. The Bible says every good and godly things come from the Father above. 
But if you want to give your your dog, your dog, your supervisor the credit, do you, whatever. But here's the truth. People who ain't playing and you want to manifest on the level of abundant life, according to John 10, 10, you don't ask the boss. You don't ask, come on, nobody. You go to God and you say, God, I want this. I found this on the menu. Glory to God of the scripture. And this is what my request is. I'm making my request known. You ask God this thing is between you and God. You're eating your bread and taking your wine over it. Communion. Come on. You're confessing hallelujah and calling things to be not like they already are. You put in the down payments on it like the hell way, knowing that you're watering that seed that you planted in the spirit room, knowing that God and what God is preparing in the back, in the dark, in the spirit. Well, hallelujah. You're preparing for it to receive it. You can clean out a space for it in your heart. Come on. Hallelujah. You're getting the classes on it. You're, you're studying on how to be more excellent in that area. But when you get it, ladies and gentlemen, please don't tip off the rest of it. Please don't play God. Please don't let God bless you and heal you and bring you from the hospital while it's COVID going on. Don't let God, hallelujah, do for you. And then you play God like he did nothing. You have to pay for the meal that you got. Amen. How do you pay? You pay with praise and you tip with worship. Oh, glory to God, saints of the most high. You got to praise God that you done lost it. You got to thank God for what he did. Hallelujah. You got to be grateful for what you got. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody go shit. Now do me a favor. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I gotta get I'm enjoying myself, but I gotta get out of here. Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, God doesn't deal in time, He deals in faith. What's on the menu, on the promises of God, get it, order it, ask for it. It's coming too. Don't get weary in well doing. You listen, you're going to reap if you just faint not. Keep on asking. Keep believing. Don't keep reordering or something different because you didn't see the results. It's being prepared for you for such a time as this. But begin to praise God. Begin to praise God. Now, God, I've been studying credit. I'm going I'm to come on here and give my whole testimony one day soon. I've been studying credit. <laughs> credit is when you go buy something today and you can pay for it, you know, you can pay for it later, right? Oh, credit, okay. It's, and that, that means they trust you that what you got today and what you're purchasing now, and you're going to come back and pay for it in another time, another time later day. Listen to me. God's credit needs to be good with you. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, Jesus. They'll give you that credit card. They'll give you that card. They'll give you that house because they believe based on your record. Come on, that you're going to pay back. Listen, some of you want to speed up your manifestation. You want to get that thing a little sooner. I, would, I, I double dog dare you to praise God now like you got it now and see what happened. Come on. That's duh. Remember that praise is the payment of what God has done. But if so, if you know God's credit is good, it's, I got some good credit with anybody. Hey, so what am I saying? What you talking about, Dr. Jenna? And you go to bed praying God and tipping him in worship now for the thing he going to do. Mm. Yeah. My God, I got to get out of here. Jesus, oh, can you give God a praise? Hallelujah. And you're praising on credit. Is God good? Is his credit good with you? If you pull God's credit report, come on somebody. And is he worthy of it? Is he worthy of it? Has he done it before? Because if he's done it before, he can do it again. Hey, has he ever touched you when the doctor said that wasn't looking good? Nah, but you're all right today. Ooh, wee, ooh, wee, ooh, wee, ooh, wee, ooh, wee, ooh, wee. I'm starting to feel something. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Then, no, no, but when you didn't have a clue, when you didn't, you put up on shot, you didn't have a clue. They came and got the car, and you would run around trying to find somebody's bicycle to borrow. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. But now you're rolling again. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, when they put you out of the house, when they put you out of the apartment, but you're not home today. Come on, somebody. God did it for you before he'll do it for you again. Somebody, can you give me about 60 seconds? God gotta hear this. I gotta hear this. I gotta hear this. Come on, begin to praise God wherever you are. Wherever you are, come on, give God a cradle. Come on, is God good for it? Is the 
house is coming. The house is coming, baby. The car is coming. All oh, the good report is coming. The health is coming back. But then you're praising right now. Hallelujah. And you give him a worship on credit. And you give him a praise on credit. And a tip it. Come on and tip it. You know, everywhere I don't know. Can you tip God today? Mm, it's for shaka. Listen to me. Listen to me. And when I was known for going in this restaurant, sometimes. The restaurant had good chili. I love chili. I go in this restaurant. Hey, and every time I go in the restaurant, I get a bowl of chili. <laughs> and a, a bowl of chili and some iced tea. That was the, and the little girl that knew me. When I would come in, she said, Oh, let me get the chili and iced tea. I said, Okay, boo. And I will always give her $20. Now, my chili and tea did not cost $20. But they, I was famous in this little restaurant for being the $20 tipper. And when I would have more people with me, you know, I'd give her $40 or $50. If I bring a whole group of people with me, I give a hundred and fifty. But I was known for being a big tipper. They know they love me and Dr. Tony because <laughs> they knew it's getting a big tip. They knew it. And praise God, I was known for that. Listen to me. Hallelujah. To the point that when I would come in the restaurant, if my girl wasn't there, her uh, the other waitress say she's not here, but I would love to wait on you, Dr. Regina. <laughs> Because they knew that, that they weren't going to get $2.50. They weren't going to get a, a, a dollar and a quarter. They knew. They knew that at least, at minimum, if I didn't have nothing, I would go in there and sometimes uh, just go in there and have a bowl of soup eh, or a salad and, and some water. But they knew they was going to get, my meal would be less than the tip. My tip would be more than the meal. It's, I, I was known for that. I was known for that. I want to leave a little bit of You know what I want to be known in heaven for? I want to be known as a worship tipper. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. I want to be known for a big tipper because I serve a big God. I want to be like David. I want to dance before the Lord and let him know I appreciate the hookup. I appreciate coming out of that situation. I appreciate the angels huh, that charge over me. And I got out of that car accident. I got uh, I came home from the hospital. Come on and go. Anybody want to be known as a big tipper? Glory to God. Come on, you need to start to worship God. Don't let the enemy, don't let the enemy get you all uh, uh, persuaded that ain't nothing going to go down, that you ain't going to get the manifestation. The devil is alive. Come on, come on. If you could just tip God today, if you could just do a pay, a pay day advance, come on. Can you pay your to go to my shakaraba? Can you pay God today for what He gonna do? Can you give God a pay day advance? Hallelujah! By praising Him, Hallelujah! Ooh, 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 ooh! I feel Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. I love you. <laughs> I love y'all so much. You don't know. You don't know. You don't have a clue how much I love. You, you inspire me. You guys get me fired up. Because <laughs> listen, uh, listen, they, 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 in the world, they call it game. They say game recognize game. In the church, anointed recognize anointed. I know who's anointed. I know who down with me. Glory to God. I know who gets this. I know I feel you. I feel you. Hallelujah that you get this. You understand that nothing's going to keep you from manifesting your miracles. So I, I pronounce this over you. I decree this over you today. And get this. Hallelujah. That your miracle and your manifestation will be better and greater than you ever seen before. 2021, this is about you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If you can dare to give God a payment of praise, hallelujah, uh, and a tip of worship. Come on, I, I, listen, I didn't preach something so good today. This is so good today. Preach, hallelujah. Preach. Praise God, y'all. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. This is breakthrough season for you, boo. Uh, in Jesus' name. I love you. If you receive that, let me see some hearts. Come on, y'all on the phone. I need you to praise God right now. Come on, if you receive it. If you receive it. If you receive it. If you get it. 
If you did it, if you did it, if God has something for you, oh, you ready to manifest? Ah, I'm ready. I need y'all to type that in. Manifestation. Ah, manifestation. Manifestation. Ah, it's coming for your family. It's coming for your house. Hey, go. I love you. Hey, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Manifestation. We're gonna get it this year. Say, Dr. Jean, I ain't seen it. I ain't seen it. I ain't seen it. Ah, oh, that's all right. But listen, listen, listen. Put a fresh order in and stick with your order. Don't change your order, boo. Don't change your order. Stay with it. In Jesus' name. I love y'all. I love y'all. <laughs> All right, all right. Listen, this is Dr. Jean. I got to get out of here for real now. Amen. I got to move on and get to my uh, uh, conference. Amen. I got to get over here. Dr. Tony and I, I love you. I'm praying for you. Be strengthened. Be strengthened. I want you to go back, share this name, share this word with a neighbor, share it with a friend. Amen. And let God bless you. And I pray for your manifestations in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Love you. Love you. And love you. 